Welcome to this episode of Locked In. In this episode, I'm gonna be showing you guys three different vlogging setups that I have personally used extensively to create all my videos and which one I think is best. So if that's something you're interested in, please stay tuned. So in this video, I'm gonna be showing you guys three different vlog setups, the pros and cons for each, in my opinion, as well as how I carry these cameras with me and which one I'd recommend. So let's get started. We're gonna go from cheapest to most expensive and we're gonna start off with Thigh Eye T5e. Now all these cameras, I will be linking the links below for obviously new ones from Amazon, but you can always look for these used or on the secondhand market as well. But we're gonna be starting with this. This is the most inexpensive option. And obviously there are other tons of these style of action cameras, but I went with this one for a few different reasons. Granted, I had picked this up a few years ago and there are obviously a new crop of options, but this is what I've been using and have used in the past. So the reason why I picked this up was one for the price point. These are about $115 on AliExpress. They float around the $150 to $170 mark on Amazon. But the big thing that I liked about this compared to a GoPro at the time was one, it has a standard tripod threaded mount on the bottom, so you can easily attach a threaded handle to this or attach it onto other style of tripod so you're not stuck with just the GoPro mount. It does come with an external case, but I like running it without a case so that I can get better audio, as well as it does have an audio input jack on this as well, which is awesome for getting external audio if needed to improve your audio setup. When I ran this as a vlog setup, I kept it out of the case and I would attach the little fuzzy mounts that everyone puts nowadays on their GoPro to clean up the audio during the wind noise, and I got pretty good results. You're watching a lot of footage that's shot with this, but here's a little clip of some audio that I recorded with it. All right, well, I'm trying out my 18th vlog setup for this ride. Um, basically, this is my cheap Chinese wannabe GoPro action camera. And it has a rear screen on the back. I get about an hour or so battery life out of this, which is pretty on par with any action camera, as well as I do like the fact that it has an instant on feature. So as soon as I hit the power button, it automatically starts recording. When you're out riding, you don't have to remember to click the record button. It just makes it easier. It is kind of annoying because it automatically records a clip, but that's something you can always turn off as well. You get a nice wide angle of view and for the resolution, this goes all the way up to 4K at 30 frames per second. I typically always use this at 2.7K at 60 frames so I could slow the footage down for the vlogs to get a little bit more extended clip or cinematic look to certain things when using this. I like this setup for the compactness and how light this is, but obviously, as you can see in the footage, it isn't super stable. I use my chest mount, and I still predominantly use it for those kinds of shots, but it isn't the most stable footage, especially with the new gen of stability that they're adding into these new age of cameras. But depending on how you mount this, you actually can get a pretty good image, and depending on how steady your hand is, you can get a pretty good stable image while riding. So obviously the pros are the price point and the resolution options on this and the audio capability, but the downsides are the stability is not what the new gen of stuff is. You're not gonna get tons of battery life. I definitely would always recommend carrying at least two batteries when going out on a ride, depending on how much you're filming or how long the ride is. And that's really it. So let's move on to the next setup. My next setup is my Osmo Pocket. This, when this came out, I was like, I have to get that. It answered what I thought at the time was gonna be all of my problems fixed in this unit. This is a 4K camera with a built-in gimbal. They basically use the same style of head and camera they use in their Osmo drones. Then this is basically what I've been using since it was released. I purchased it about a month or two after it came out. So every single vlog since then has been using this. And you can see how great and stable this footage is, but it isn't perfect. So I get great battery life out of this. I get an easy hour and a half or so out of ba the battery life. I actually can't fill up the memory card before the battery runs out. And I really loved using this solution. The main thing for it is you can obviously, if you know this camera, you can do the selfie mode. So you can basically see yourself. It is a small screen and it is cropped. So it shoots in widescreen, but you're only gonna get this cropped image, but at least helps you place your face in the middle of the shot. So that is a great thing when doing your piece to cameras like I am right now, and gives you that confidence that you're getting the shot that you want. But there are some situations where this doesn't work as well. Mounting this is basically something I've never done. It doesn't really make a whole lot of sense. I've seen a lot of reviews where trying to use this as a chest mount, it's gonna basically try to track or follow. It's too slow for that. But for piece to cameras and shooting parts on the bike, this is amazing and I highly recommend it. And I've had no issues and I have totally dropped it. The only thing I add that you need to add to this that I recommend is a basically mount so that you can attach a lanyard. I always put something like this on pretty much all my cameras so that in case 
I have to grab the brakes and drop it because of an emergency situation, I cannot drop the entire camera on the ground. So you can pick these simple 3D printed mounts out or any other ones from a different company online. I like this one because it doesn't have the GoPro mount. Most of them do on the back, but I wanted this purely for this style of setup, but you can get a GoPro attachment for these as well. Audio wise, you're gonna have basically a built-in mic with a noise canceling microphone on the bottom. I get pretty good audio out of this. I usually would tape on, again, another one of those fuzzy wind muffs that you stick on here. I did that, it does kind of impede where the button was. I wish the mic was taller on it. And the only other thing that's good and bad about this is when you're talking to camera, the audio is amazing because it's facing you and your hand and kind of the unit are blocking the wind so you get clear audio and you can hear that in this clip right here. I think I'm gonna keep this bike in this setup for cross season. I'm not exactly sure what I'm gonna do with it after, but I have noticed that when I'm filming someone because the microphone is facing me, that audio is a lot quieter than I really like. So when I'm filming friends, if I don't kind of naturally do this, which to get better audio, then I obviously lose the screen. So it almost needs a screen on both sides. So keep that in mind, your audio is gonna be quieter or your friends are gonna have to speak up when shooting. GoPro. Yeah. Uh, it was uh, really, uh, it was ugly. Yeah. It was like a box. Yeah. Oh well. So the pro and cons for this camera are, the footage looks great and it's super, super stable. And the audio quality when using it in the vlog or selfie mode is really, really good. And the battery life, in my opinion, is excellent. But the cons are, one, the field of view is obviously a lot more narrow than it is on a GoPro, so you really have to use your full arm to get certain shots or put the camera farther away than you'd expect with an action camera. As well as, like I mentioned, the audio quality is good, but it doesn't work well when filming others if you're not talking to camera. As well as certain shots and what I like to do, it's kind of hard to align the camera because unlike a GoPro, when you angle your hand, the camera is already set to that exact angle. But this one can move or be slightly off what you expect, so you can miss some shots or not get them framed up exactly the way you like. And lastly, there isn't a extra battery that you can add into this when it dies. You have to charge it via the USB-C port on the bottom. So that is something that you're gonna have to carry a small external battery pack to charge it if you're doing a really long multi-day or, or extended ride and you run out of battery. And lastly, this thing retails for about 320 to 360 bucks on Amazon, depending on if you get accessories or anything like that with it. Lastly, we're stepping on to my RX100. This is definitely a YouTube favorite as far as a vlog camera, and I tried using it for cycling with mixed success. I have shot a few vlogs using this. I really obviously bought it because of the flip up screen that it does have, and it does shoot great video. I really like the Sony cameras. I shoot with a Sony A6500 when I shoot these style of videos or any of my beauty shots but I wanted something more portable with a flip up screen. This is a great camera because it's easy to hold one handed and I have small hands. I just keep the lanyard on it like this so that I hold it. If I drop it, it stays on my wrist. The reason why I went with the Mark III, one is for the price point. I picked this up second hand and two, it has, in my opinion, the better lens for cyclists. This reason why is because of the focal length of this as well as the f-stop. Not to get too overly technical, basically this is the widest lens they offered on it as well as with the lowest aperture at 1.8 when shot wide open and basically not zoomed in at all. That's really what I wanted to give a variety of lighting conditions and the ability to shoot. So especially during dusk or anything like that, it's gonna be a better image than the newer gen, which has a higher f-stop and as well as a longer focal range granted, but for what I'm shooting with, I wanted something with the widest lens possible. So I think this gives the best image as far as all the three. If you're looking to get a really cinematic or give a different look to your footage, this definitely has a SLR style or mirrorless camera style look to it when color graded correctly. I usually color graded all my vlog footage and I really liked working with this, but you're only gonna get mild image stabilization with this camera, so you are still gonna get some camera shake but this is definitely a usable camera and you don't need a gimbal or anything like that to shoot it while vlogging. Obviously it is the largest and heaviest setup out of all of them, but the flip up screen is great. You can see everything in the shot and especially when shooting others or anything like that, you can easily angle the screen up if you're shooting low and the camera's out of sight, you can look down and get your shot and make sure that you're getting the framing that you want, which is awesome. So the pros and cons to this are, the pros are the image quality. This I think gives the most it gives the best look out of all three of the cameras for sure. The giant flip up screen is great so that you make sure that you get your shots and the adjustability of it allows you to get those low cool riding shots 
while you're riding safely, as well as the stills on this are great. So if you are taking pictures, this is gonna look way better than most cell phone cameras out there, or pretty much all in my opinion. The downsides are for this is the battery life isn't great. You're gonna to wanna to carry at least a battery or two with you. I have totally tried to shoot vlogs and run out of battery with a short-ish ride and a full battery charge, as well as since it does have an external lens that sticks out when you use it. As you can see here, I've totally dropped this camera and I thought I ruined it. So this is something that can be damaged and obviously that's gonna render the camera pretty much useless. So you really have to be careful with this setup. This is the most fragile out of all three options that I've shown you in this video. As well as the startup time is a little bit laggier than the other two because you have to wait for the lens to extend, as well as when you're putting it away, you have to wait for the lens to retract. And it is the most costly option. These you can still pick up even though they're an older generation for around $500 new. I believe I picked this up for around $300 or $350 used. I don't exactly remember because I've had this camera for so long, but you can always find these. They are a really popular series of camera, but I definitely recommend at least getting the Mark III out of all of the ones. It's my best bang for the buck for the money and the options that I like, but if you want a different focal length, then you're gonna have to look at a newer or possibly the older gens. So then I'm gonna show you how I carry all three of these cameras. I use the Kai Venture Maglock Caddy, and this is by far my favorite way to carry all of them. If I don't use this because I don't have a lot of stuff that I'm carrying with me, I will definitely throw these all these options into my pocket, but I like that they are out of the way and in kind of their own protective case, so in case I fall off the bike, the camera is protected. So this easily mounts to the left or right side of your handlebar and onto the stem and underneath the fork to easily carry all three of these options, and this Kai Venture bag carries all three with no problem, with plenty of extra storage for batteries or battery packs. If you're interested in picking one of these up, I'll link the link in the description below. I will be doing a full independent review of this bag as well, so make sure to turn notifications on so you can see that video when it comes out. So let's break into my final thoughts. Out of the three of these, I would definitely go with the Osmo Pocket. I think it gives you the perfect blend as far as price point, image quality, image stabilization, and frame rate options. I've really liked it. Again, it, does, it isn't perfect. There are things that I like about the other two cameras as well. I think if you can only get one, that's what I would recommend. And then later down the line, if you're really getting into it, the GoPro or a GoPro style camera will be a great second camera for those shots that you can't use that for or it's not great for. Again, chest mounted, handlebar mounted, seat rail mounted or anything like that. You're gonna want something small, light, I prefer to go something cheap for an action camera, so if you do break it, it's not gonna be a big heartbreak like it would be with a new $400 GoPro. But again, it's because it's your secondary camera. So keep that in mind. So I hope you like this video. I know this isn't a tech channel, but I wanted to show you guys my setup and what I use for cycling vlogging. So I hope you like this episode. Please make sure to subscribe and turn notifications on so you can see my weekly cycling content that I produce for this channel, as well as you can follow me on Facebook and Instagram. Links are on the description below. And thanks for watching another episode of Locked In. Let's get locked in.